Hello everyone who's interested in Porsches and cars and all sorts of crap. Um, coming to you from my garage in Australia and yeah, it's pretty hot, it's summer. And yeah, we've just had a week of blazing hot temperatures, which you don't care about. But if you can hear the fan blowing in the background, I don't care, you can put up with it. So anyway, there might be a little bit of noise because, well, you can hear people revving their cars and my next door neighbors look like they're moving, I'm not too sure. And of course the movers like to have the radio on in the truck to to sort of show off how much bass they're, they're making when no one really cares. So anyway, I'm just going to turn the camera around. I'm going to show you what I'm up to and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back to the engine on the stand and talk about the wiring. I've almost done with the wiring and I think I, think I understand it. Well, you know, famous last words, we'll wait and see till I plug it in. But for some of you that were a little bit concerned and... Uh, made comments or sent me messages about how tidy or lack of tidy everything was it's not too bad so I've just put one cable tie up there just to give you an idea of how it will be at the back of the engine and so everything's coming out of my multi connector here I haven't done the final heat shrink I've, I've inserted all the cape all the pins and double check triple checked I've checked for continuity on the pin to every single plug on the harness to make sure that I've got a, a signal here and a ground there all the grounds are joined or, or sorry all the grounds for the injectors go to the ECU of course all the powers are joined etc etc everything is lined up 100% I'm going to go on a limb and say 100% guaranteed um, but I still haven't heat shrunk this last sheathing on and I know the eagle-eyed among you will say, oh, you haven't put any, what do they call them, strain loops in or strain relief loops or whatever. I don't care. This is my first harness. So this is just a learning experience for me. It's my harness. And, yeah, hopefully the, the next one, um, 2.0, will be a, a little bit better than this one, I think. But the only things I've got left to do, I'm going to have to extend my earth here or just ground it there, for that's for the coils. I'm still waiting on the fuel pressure sensor, so I haven't terminated this one because it's going to come out of there. Um, and this is my intake air temperature sensor. Now, I haven't done anything with that yet. I guess I can go ahead and put a plug on there because eventually this is going to be mounted in the back of some sort of a tube that's going to be sitting out here, I guess. Because the elbow is missing. It's, that's going to get some plugs made for the, for the elbow. Uh, but there'll be an aluminium tube coming in here, I think. And then there'll be a temperature sensor on the back of that and that's where it'll take its air temperature from uh, map sensor is just waiting for one of those rubber isolation mounts which will just sit there and i'll just mount my map sensor there for the time being a couple of the questions i had for people before um i was talking about where do i get my, my vacuum signals from and it seems to be unanimous that yes map sensor is obviously after the butterfly because it wants to sense how much vacuum it's running um, the other port will be used, as I said, to run my fuel pressure sensor and the fuel damper, which is still in existence over here. That one's going to be plugged up. I have no need for that one. Um, and for the boost control solenoid, uh, that's going to be mounted. Now, they say that you should take that from somewhere between the turbo and the thr throttle body. Um, there isn't actually a mount. Actually, I'll show you the turbo here. I guess you want to see the turbo. So this is the Pulsar turbo. Um, all nice and pretty and spinny and stuff. It's got this little port here, which apparently is a port for a speed sensor, which I don't think I have a use for. Um, but there is no nipple. Um, I know some of them already have a nipple on the side for a um, an air airline vacuum line but this one doesn't have that so my options are to either add a bleed nipple to the housing which i don't think i'm going to do um, i think what i'm going to do is after i've had the pipe made that goes to the intake preferably via an intercooler i think i'm going to try and take a vacuum port or a pressure port i should say probably from the same part of the pipe where the intake air temperature is going to be mounted, okay? Um, so what I might do is I might just try, because I don't think I've shown on video the exhaust before, so I might just stop the video, flip it over. Everything's just mounted. It's not bolted down 100%, but it is mounted. Um, but before I do that, sorry, there's no script here, as you can see. It's all, it's all on the cuff. Um, off the cuff, off the cuff. Um, I've got my wide band lines here. And 
I'm not 100% sure what I should do. Should I just crimp them and make it a solid lead or should I put a six pin plug here and for whatever reason make it unpluggable or, or detachable? Is there, is there any need to make it a detachable point? Um, the wide band, the flying lead supplied is actually quite long and it will reach I don't know if you can really see that. Like if I just if I just put the plug somewhere around here, which is roughly where it's going to go, I mean that's that's going to mate that's going to mate up quite nicely. So I'm guessing, yeah. And again, what's what's the correct way? I mean, when you start, if you start uh, using open spliced open barrel crimps to join wires, should you stagger them so that if in an unforeseen situation something starts to wear through none of them can actually touch so should you step them along so that none of them are side by side or what's the or is it does anyone really care i've got no idea so i i, I don't know the um the etiquette or the correct way of doing things but if anyone knows please chime in um okay so uh, you can probably see, yep, there's, we're going to talk about the oil drain as well. So I'm just going to pause the camera and I'll flip the engine over and show you what's what. Okay, so maybe maybe that little shot will make a nice little thumbnail for this video. I'm not so sure. I guess people probably want to see a picture of a turbo. Well, funnily enough, as I was talking with a friend earlier today, I think the only way to get lots of views is to put a picture of a girl that's, you know, half naked maybe with a picture of a Porsche next to her or something like that, that might get me some more views. Um, but yeah, look, so these, because I'm not doing, this is a, a conversion to turbo, this isn't a, a, a purely built engine for a turbo. Um, I haven't gone to the expense of equal length headers, etc., etc. These are actually the stock original heat exchangers for a three liter SC motor. So that's what I've done. So these are just the normal thin flange ones. What I have done ahead of ahead of you know before any of this, I did go and get them ceramic coated um, because I knew that I was going to be doing this eventually. So I got this done last year sometime because um, yeah, I just and I wanted to make sure it lasted as long as it possibly could. I wasn't really thinking about suppressing or containing heat. I wasn't really thinking about that. I wanted to make sure that what was inside was completely clean. So there'd be nothing to blow through to the turbo. Um, don't worry about these bolts. Again, this is all just mocked up. They're just here so I can sort of see how things look and mount and whatnot. So this is a J pipe from a 930. So I ordered this from a fellow in the United States because I couldn't find one anywhere here locally. And well, not, not for what I would call reasonable money anyway. So again, had that ceramic coated, um, had the connector pipe or the crossover pipe ceramic coated as well. And as you can see, I've had a custom made, well, sorry, well I didn't have it made, sorry. There's a guy in the United States, one of the forum users on Pelican Parts. He's ran a batch of these, um, not cheap, but this should in theory do the job. So I am still planning to run gravity feed for the oil drain from the turbo. And everyone's gonna say, oh, you're gonna have all sorts of problems, and yeah, maybe. But, I mean, yes, I probably should have just gone with an oil pump from the get-go, um, but again, I, I, I'm, I guess I'm learning. Um, I wanted to learn and see for myself, and by, by no means am I saying that I am an expert, because I'm definitely not. Building an engine, I can do that, and I'm happy to sort of say, yeah, I'm pretty good at that. Um, as for doing a conversion, this is the first time I've played with a turbo at all. But from what I understand, the original 930s and their original turbos are what we call a journal bearing, so they're a plain bearing turbo, and they have a lot more oil going through them, and that's why they used to run a standard oil scavenge pump that would run off the camshaft on this side of the motor here on the uh, left hand side of the motor or if you're in the United States the driver's side so there used to be a pump that would mount off the end of the camshaft here similar to how a power steering pump runs off the back of a 964 or a 993 um, so with using a more modern turbo which is a ball bearing turbo they run a lot less oil so I'm told and that's actually the oil restrictor so you can see that it's got a tiny tiny orifice for oil to go through 
I mean, obviously there's the other concern that, well, will there be enough with a lot less oil going through it? Will it be enough to keep the turbo cool and stop it from cooking itself? Well, I, I guess ultimately you'd be better off to use the, the water ports on the side here and run some coolant through, but we don't have coolant in our cars. And again, I'm, I'm sort of taking the lead from everyone that sort of forged this path ahead over in the US because they, you know, that's, that's where everybody lives. Um, bigger market, bigger market, of course. So I'm following their lead. Plenty of guys are doing it and they're saying they're not having any problems. So I'm going to suck it and see and, and give it a go. But they're also saying that if you're using a ball bearing turbo like this, which uses a lot less oil, then the chances of you running into any issues by trying to use gravity feed is minimal. Well, people are saying they're not having issues. So I'm not, I'm not the first one to try this. I'm probably the, uh, I don't know, thousandth person to try it. So, so that, that's a billet plate that's been made and it's, it's been quite well dished out in the, in the, uh, in the top or the, or the bottom of the engine. So it does actually accommodate a 3.2 oil pump, which has the, the dome screen. And this engine does actually have a 3.2 Carrera oil pump in it. And the, the, I can't really show you, I mean, I can take these plugs off and show you and try and have a look, but there's about that much, or maybe 10 millimeters clearance or so between the bottom of the strainer and the top of, of this, the, the, um, the cavity. So there's plenty of space. There'll be a 90 degree fitting here. And then I'll use this dash 10 um, braided tube and I'll make up a, a custom length oil line. But and I probably need to flip the engine back over now that you've seen all this. I'm trying to figure out where to run the line because, um, you know, I think you want to have a straight shot. Someone did suggest, I can't remember where they said it, maybe on Facebook, they said you might be better off pivoting this 90 degrees or maybe even pivoting it... Um, 45 degrees so that this is pointing towards the turbo and then the turbo has a straight shot. I don't know if that's going to make a difference whether it goes there or whether it goes here because that point there is still, that height's going to be the same height. Um, I don't know, let me know what you think. Um, I will say though that when you put the uh, short, when you put the long block on a table, like a lift table like that, it's a lot more stable having this um, because it doesn't it doesn't rock so it's quite handy um, and on the other side I mean again that's just got a plug and a, and a cap on it for the time being I'm just waiting for it to arrive I've ordered a, a magnetic drain plug and for, if anyone's interested the thread is an m20 by 1.5 millimeter thread um, but it's a nicely made little piece of uh, kit and yeah it wasn't cheap and if you want to know how much it was better go into pelican parts and have a look hey um, all right I'm going to stop the video I'm going to turn the engine back up just so I can show you the turbo sitting on the flange and the line of attack the angle of attack to get to the uh, the sump plate okay so this is the turbo mounted and I think I've clocked it if that's if that's the right terminology I've undone the bolts here and sort of rotated this so that the oil feeds pointing oh that's it's not tightened up yet of course that'll be pointing straight up and down and then the drain will be coming out the bottom uh, that's the oil supply line from Turbocraft. So I guess that goes like that, and then that goes on there, and that's why it's so long, so that makes sense now. And my wideband plug's going to have to come somewhere around here-ish. Um, so, a couple of things. One, there's a lot of weight on that turbo, as people with turbos know. And the old original 930s had a four-bolt flange here. And they would have a, 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 a bracket that would sort of go between the muffler flange and the turbo exhaust flange. And that bracket would then be like that and then that. And then it would, I think, be bolted to the, uh, the engine cradle. And that would be what supported the weight of the turbo. So it wasn't all just resting on this J-pipe. Because the only thing supporting this J-pipe are uh, these nuts and bolts here. And as I said, don't take too much notice. These are just mock-up ones. And that's not even tightened up yet. But even when it's not tight, like it's still, I've got to be honest, it's, it's, it's pretty strong, but I don't think it's smart to have a big, I don't know how many kilos that thing weighs, but it, you wouldn't want to drop it on your foot. But it's not smart to have that bouncing up and down without a brace. So 
on the uh, while I was buying parts from Turbocraft in the States, they used they were advertising these cool little brackets that say that you know they they're better than the original, and I, I can't use the original ones anyway because I don't have a full, full bolt flange, and that you know you'll never break it, and I'll never break this one because it doesn't fit. Well, it doesn't fit my application. So the idea is that that barrel there is meant to go here, on on there, like that. And then that hole is meant to line up to that, and that's and they give you this big long bolt that goes through the whole the whole lot. Um, but in my case, the angles are just the angles are all wrong for whatever reason. And obviously, I'd have to replace that stud and make that stud a good 10 or 15 millimeters longer than what's in there. But if you can see the uh, if you can see what I'm dealing with. So yeah, I, I need to make something. And that's where I'm going to try and call on a favour from someone that knows how to weld because people know that I can't weld, even though I own two welders. <laughs> it hasn't gotten any better. So anyway, that's one of the hurdles I need to overcome. The other hurdle is uh, fitting, well, I guess fitting an intercooler and an intake pipe and whatnot, but I'm hoping to borrow an intercooler from a friend. I don't think he watches these videos, but yeah, hopefully I'll get that in the next few days. And then I think it's a matter of buying online, just like a, a adapter kit. So you can buy these like for maybe a hundred bucks, some different angled aluminium bends and silicon joiners and hose clamps. And I think that's what I need. Um, yeah, so that's that. But the important part here is getting onto the oil level now I'm not sure how to really do this but so under here you can see that blue can, can you see that yeah you can so that blue cap there that's just covering it up but there will be a dry oh, I've got it here let me show it to you where is it yeah uh, so it's just that so I bought that and again another question for you all like this is specifically an oil drain with a dash 10 fitting on it and again it uses an o-ring and i would have thought that that was going to be scalding hot so am i meant to still put a gasket on there or not um, the turbo came with a gasket but yeah i just like to know whether that's meant to um just go straight back on straight onto the housing there but you can see that once that's on there that'll be sitting down and then there'll be a 90 degree bend or, or a, some sort of a degree bend coming off. So it's going to exit somewhere around here. So that means it's going to be pointing straight at that, <laughs> which is not handy. Actually, let me just try and mock it up. Just like, Can I pause this? How do I pause? Oh, I think you're just going to stop it, don't you? All right. Okay. I don't like the look of this. I've just screwed on the, the drain fitting and then I've just lightly loose, you know, finger tightened on the... Uh, this is just a 90 degree because I thought maybe that's what I might need. Obviously that's not going to work to go for a straight shot because it's going to point straight at the uh, straight at the J-pipe. Um, so I'd have to come out and kind of go around and I assume I'm actually going to have to go to that side there because you're not going to be able to bend the pipe. But I don't think there's enough of a fall. I mean, realistically, I don't know what sort of drain you're meant to have, or you know, like how much of a, a fall you're meant to have per meter or per half meter or per foot or whatever you want to call it, but that's um, that's almost level. Just eyeballing it, and I know that you know because it's on an engine stand, it's it's tilting back that way, or, or sorry, that way a little bit. But man, that's um, that's not great. So if I get under here with my bit of aluminium tube. If I go bottom to bottom, I'm trying to, I don't know what you can see in the camera here. Oh, there's a plane going overhead, that's great. So if I'm just, okay, look, there's there's definitely a fall. If I just hold the bottom, you know, the, the tube onto the bottom of that fitting, and then line it up with the bottom of that fitting, the, uh, the, AN, the, the 90 degree there, there's definitely a fall. And if that was water, it would flow down. But, geez. So here's the thing. I mean, I'm not, 
I'm not quite sure what the effect is called, but it's but I know that the tube, and I see them on, on pictures online, but the tube, the hose, usually comes down and bends and then it sort of makes its way. That means that this part here is going to be below the pickup point. So I guess as long as as long as that point, as long as this point is higher than that point, the oil is always going to flow. It just means that there's going to be some here all the time. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would love for anyone who does know to chime in and let me know whether that's the wrong fitting because obviously, I mean, I think that has to be the fitting, doesn't it? 90 degrees has to be the fitting and then just sort of loop it around to this side here. So another 90 degree out the side here and then just do that. But um, that doesn't seem good. But anyway, or am I looking at it the wrong way? Because technically, sure, that's where the pipe comes out. But realistically, that's where the oil's coming out. So that means that is that is that the way I should be looking at it? So realistically, it's not from it's not from the bottom of of there to the bottom of that fitting. It's more to the it's more like that. Is that the right way to look at it in terms of the flow of a liquid from an area above to an area below. Jeez, I should have stayed at uni a bit longer, shouldn't I? Okay. Um, yeah. Well, it spins nicely. Um, so, the final piece of the puzzle, because I can't weld well at all, is these little adapter doodads. So because it uses a V-band flange on the turbo, comes with one of these and you can get some three inch pipe. I've got a couple of options for mufflers and one of them of course is one of these stupid things with a mount for a sensor of course. So I've got a friend who's going to make me up an adapter which basically has a four bolt flange on this side. So when I attach that with the clamp, I'll have a four bolt flange then I can bolt that stupid thing to it. Um, it's going to be offset. I, I don't care. I, I just, at this point, I'm at. I just want to make the thing run, and make sure it runs okay. My wiring isn't finished because I just realised the other day that I still need to make an, a new engine harness because um, I'm not going to have things like cold start injectors, warm up regulators, auxiliary air regulators, and whatnot. So I need to make a new engine harness, um, and I bought a couple of 14 pin connectors to you know adapt, etc., etc. But yeah, that shouldn't be too hard. That's the turbo, that's the potential exhaust. I need some help about this bracket situation and I need a lot of help about the oil level and also do I put a plug on the wide band or do I just do a hard connection? If I do, do I stagger the joints for the open barrel connectors? All right, thanks for watching.